Aloha and welcome. Welcome to my live stream on Facebook. We're in the first minute, so I am going to make sure that my audio is working. I should come up here shortly on live stream. There we are. Let's see if I can hear myself. Audio is working. Okay. We have launch. So, my name is Master Paul. And this is my little earpiece here. So, it's not uh, visually pleasing, but let's see if we can get it to work well. I'll have to listen to myself again, make sure it's and audible enough. This is my yeah, that's pretty good. So, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Master Paul, and I am honored to be a worldwide representative of Dr. and Master Zigong Sha. As a worldwide representative of Dr. and Master Sha, part of my mission is to serve you, the general public. And I'm able to do that through communications such as this. I'd like to invite you and all souls who join me here today to be brisk in your communication, just like now. Thank you, Yvonne. I see you and I appreciate your comments. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be here at this time. It is an opportunity to connect heart to heart, soul to soul, connect to heaven, and bring their messages to earth. It's an opportunity to share the wisdoms I've been so very blessed to receive in this lifetime. I have been on a soul journey for well over 30 years, and it has led me to uh, <laughs> just about everything you can imagine, but the last 10 years have been the most beautiful ones, and it has aligned everything I've ever learned to the highest possibility. What I teach is soul, every aspect of soul, and how it can bring healing and balance into your life. If we have an imbalance in our life, 100% of the time, there's a soul blockage related to it. What does that mean, there's a soul blockage? That means that our soul, which never dies, can sometimes have restrictions or blockages that are become a part of it. How does that occur? It occurs because our soul has life experiences, incarnations, whatever you'd like to call it. In those incarnations, it, the physical being during that time, the personality that shows up during that lifetime, makes many, many choices. Many of those choices are very valuable. They are filled with love and peace and harmony. They are filled with prosperity, serving others, bringing prosperity to them, bringing healing and health to others, bringing spiritual wisdom and guidance to others. Those lifetimes bring wonderful positive virtue into our records in heaven. The soul carries those records. The soul carries those in the form of uh, uh, what's called deeds or, or uh, virtue is the term that is often used. Also, when we leave that lifetime, we go back to our source. We receive additional guidance, wisdom, and insights as to what we want to do next time. We incarnate back in. Maybe we go through a series of experiences that lead us down a path that was not the intention of our soul and our soul's journey. And in those cases, we make choices that are out of alignment with love, out of alignment with source and divine. Those choices look like cheating, lying, stealing, taking advantages of others. Um, it could mean killing others, possibly. When we make choices of that nature, we create unpleasant experiences that stay with our soul. Those have many terms. Some refer to it as karma. I refer to it as spiritual debt. When we make choices, both positive and negative, these align to our soul. These soul experiences manifest in the physical lifetime that we are in. So when we have a wonderful relationship, but we can't seem to put two nickels together. Where do you think your spiritual virtue is? Where do you think your spiritual debt lies? When you make choices for spiritual love, spiritual support, guidance, going out of your way to serve others, then that means you will probably have a wonderful life in those areas. Many of us, for example, I have a soulmate program 
that uh, is quite effective, quite popular. And the soulmate program is built on an understanding that if we have relationship flaws, relationship blockages, we just can't seem to find that right person, then that is directly related to making choices in a past lifetime that could have brought relationship blockages to others. I'll give you an example. I never reveal names, but I was just working with a client and by all of the measures that I've been able to uh, ascertain, she is a very adept, aware, a very astute, intelligent, and more than capable being that is um, clear on what she wants. And yet, when she thinks she's found that person, all of a sudden things start unraveling five, six, eight months into that relationship. When I went about the process of discerning the patterns that show up in her life through her familial uh, relationships, friend relationships, and lover relationships, it revealed a pattern. And the pattern is what I would refer to as a soul blockage, a karmic soul blockage. One in which, in some of her friend-based relationships, there was deceit, there was treachery, there was some abandonment, there was uh, uh, competition, there was um, telling him one thing and then changing and you know that's happens once in a while with one person but multiple good friends has happened these kinds of things show up in our love relationships as well they show up in multiple forms so that was just one example so the soul carries all of these experiences from all time also many of our teachings teach us that we carry the debt of our ancestors one of the famous Asian teachings is the ancestors plant the trees, we receive the benefits. Well, what if the trees that were planted were unpleasant trees? What if our ancestors took people's lands and kept their money? If they couldn't pay their taxes, they took their lands, the families starved. That would be a very unpleasant tree for us, the ancestor, to deal with. On the other hand, you might know some very uh, people that you would not be, not be easy to say good things about. They might have a lot of financial blessings, but they don't do good things with them. They're extravagant, they're rude, they bring unpleasant messages to the planet, but that's who they are. And you, how could a person like that have that kind of abundance in their life? Here I am, hardworking, loving the best I can, but a person like that shows up. How is that right? And these kinds of questions can be answered when we look at the bigger picture, when we look at the picture of the soul carrying forth the record of our choices from all lifetimes, that person that I just described might have done good things in previous times, might have earned the financial blessings they are receiving, but it could be that their ancestors have earned it and now they are reaping the rewards of their ancestors' love-based labors. They're also destroying it for their future ancestors. So this is the wheel of life, if you will. It doesn't really matter what belief system you come from. When you recognize that they, a lot of them say the same thing, what you sow is what you reap. In the Buddhist traditions, they use the word karma. In uh, other traditions, they'll say the word duh. In the Islamic and uh, other traditions along those lines, they'll talk about this terminology. The only difference is a people's perspective about how long these debts or positive things occur in our life. So I'm not here to go into that. What I'm here to share with you is the power of soul and how it can transform all aspects of your life when you connect at that level. This takes me to the next level of soul. The next level of soul is a teaching that my teacher, Dr. Master Shah, brought. And it was a very... It was a teaching that I had to work with for a while before I chose to accept it. I'm very much one of those people that had to, things have to validate out. I'm not just going to take it at face value. As much as that person might be very well respected in the world and have 20 New York Times best-selling books and people that say he's great, that doesn't mean necessarily that I'm going to believe it. I have to check things out. And one of the things that he taught was that everyone and everything has a soul. Most of us believe that the humans have a soul. We have no question about that. Um, possibly animals, uh, plants, maybe, maybe not. Um, but beds, chairs, cars, I don't think so. His teaching is that 
everything has the energy, the essence of God, the energy and the essence of the divine in it. That speck of energy, that speck of matter that coagulated to make that car is still divine. It never went away from divine. Therefore, everything has the spark of God in it. Everything has a soul. I said, okay, I can work with that for a while. Let's see how it validates out. Through the past eight or nine years, I went through the process of validating it out. I am personally convinced. I'll share with you how and why as we go through today. So let's apply that to, for example, soulmate. Um, with soulmate, we have relationships with that person that may or may not be the right one for us. That person we're with has a soul, obviously. We have a soul. But the relationship has a soul. How is that possible? Let's go backwards a step. If everything has a soul, then what about the car? Well, we're not sure about that. But what about the car that was invented? It started with a thought. Where did the thought come from? Did you think about it or did it come from creation? The probability is it came from source. It came from creation. And so creator created all the energy and all the matter that makes up everything. And a thought was manifest. That thought was brought forth into a form of physical manifestation over time. And therefore something was created from it. A relationship has many lifetimes, according to what I choose to believe, based on an understanding that we've been with that mother and father before, we've been with that lover before, we've been with that person before. And if we move into a relationship which we think is just wonderful for the first one, two, three years, and all of a sudden it goes south, and we just scratch in our head why, if we look at the understanding of soul and apply this wisdom to it, we can get a far superior answer. And what that is, is if during those lifetimes we've had relationships with that soul that we're having a relationship now and if during that lifetime a relationship was formed and then we come together again and, and that relationship is further formed that relationship itself has a soul the relationship of that soul carries both good and unpleasant experiences in our lifetime now if we're having unpleasant experiences with that relationship there's a good chance that in the past we have harmed that soul we have lied to them if they're lying to us. We have cheated on them if they're cheating on us. We have deceived them if they're deceiving us. It's really very simple when you break it down. So when I work with people, for example, on soulmate, one of the things that I do is we identify all the different places in their life and people in their life and how they are being harmed and hurt. And then we look at it from a responsibility positioning. We look at it from the position of if I have been deceived, if I have been cheated on, if I have been harmed, there is a possibility, even though I can't see it, I can't remember it, I might even have difficulty with believing it, but there is a possibility that I, in a previous time, have done that same thing to others, and therefore I am being reminded. There's also a possibility that it's the first time, it's just happened, okay? And that person just hurt me. That's certainly equally possible. But here's the dollar ninety-eight cent question. If there is a possibility that we go from lifetime to lifetime and our spiritual debt and spiritual virtue follows us, if that person harmed me, cheated on me, lied to me, if that person over there stole from me $100,000, hurt me forever, do I want to hold a grudge and then in the future steal that money from them? Do I want to hold a grudge and then in the future deceive them, lie to them, cheat on them. I don't. I kind of don't think you do. So the opportunity to clear the spiritual debt in the moment is present. When we have financial blockages, when we have relationship blockages, when we have blockages of any kind, they can, the source can be identified. This is one of the values of what's called soul readings. If you've been following me the last uh, five days since I started the live streaming, you will note that I have done some soul readings. I will do some today. Uh, go ahead and ask any questions that you would like uh, as we move forward about any area of your life you would like some soul guidance on. And I will ask for guidance from heaven on those uh, the answers. Um, if you'd like to know how it works and all that, I've explained that in the last three or four days. Happy to go back to those. I'll give you a little 
understanding of how it works before I do a soul reading. But um, there's a record in heaven for everything. So I just ask for what happened that might be the source of the blockage area you're experiencing. Very simple. So the soul is not limited to the human body because everything is God, everything is divine. I mentioned yesterday, I'll mention again today as an example. Uh, somebody has back pain, had back pain their whole life. They continue to have car accidents, can't seem to figure out why. It's always your rear end, why it always reactivates that back pain. There is a deeper spiritual reason for it. The chances that they or their ancestors have brought harm and suffering to other people's backs is relatively high. How do we dissolve these soul level blockages? There is three answers. They all come back to the same thing. The first one is love. Love is our originating source. We are never separate from love, but we think we are. Separation is what separates us from Creator. We separate in so many different ways. We separate in thinking that we're separate from humanity. We separate in thinking that we're separate from love. We separate when we watch the TV and watch drama and get excited about death, get excited about uh, all those unpleasant things we see on TV, get caught up in the dramas. We separate from God and creation when we fail to trust that everything is in divine plan and divine timing. All of these create separation. So one way to bring healing to the various blockages in our life is love. And there is our love, and there is divine love. And those carry a different frequency. It's hard for us to shift out of our very stuck place sometimes. Sometimes we're so stuck in our stuff, our blockages, our depression, our woe is me, our financial tightness, whatever that blockage area is, sometimes we're so stuck in it that our love-based frequency is just not enough to shift us. Just can't. So we call on Jesus. We call on Mother Mary. We call on Guan Yin. That's the deity behind me. There's Happy Buddha on this side. We call on God. We call on anyone we can think of to try to lift us up out of our lower frequency blocked area. If we address it from the level of soul, from the level of love, we have the highest propensity to create shift. But we need a higher love. When we call those souls forth, do you think they come? What do you think? The answer is, you see, of course they come. Absolutely they come. Do we feel the difference? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. How do we know they come? It depends on how open your spiritual channels are. That's a whole nother show I'll do. But spiritual channels, every human has spiritual channels. Every human is equally connected to heaven and earth. And every human has the ability to talk, see, and receive answers from divine Tao, source, heaven, and everybody else. Why can't we see God? Why can't we see Jesus when we call Jesus and he's right there? Why can't we hear the answers when we beg for that help? Our blockages in our physical body, our karma, our spiritual debt, our separation from source disallows the clarity that will allow that information to come through. I offer soul readings. I offer some third eye uh, visions when I see them. I offer guidance. But it is not Paul that is doing it. I've just worked diligently for the past 40 years to open the spiritual channels such that the information that comes through, the healing blessings that occur when I offer a healing, they're true, they're effective, and they work. I don't, I don't question it anymore. I used to question it. I questioned it a lot until I got over my own validation issues. And I, I, I know I've done too many healings. I know I've done too many soul readings. They work. There's zero question in my mind about it. Maybe in yours. I get it. That's okay. I went through those processes. But know that God's always there. God is more than happy to assist you. But you have to open yourself up. The first way is through higher love. The second way is the other side of that coin, and that is forgiveness. Forgiveness brings inner peace and inner joy. Forgiveness 
is literally the fastest way to move yourself from where you're at to where you want to be. How do you forgive somebody or something? If you don't know what it is you're supposed to forgive, you don't know where the blockage area is, or they just hurt you so much you just can't get yourself to that point. You do that by connecting with someone like myself. Their Master Shah has 90 divine channels worldwide. He has trained many people in his exact same wisdom and teachings. We're all here to serve you. We're all here to assist you to move through and past whatever blockage you're experiencing so that you don't have to suffer anymore. There are over 1,000 videos that are filled with higher level healing blessings, frequencies of love and forgiveness that are there free and complimentary for you to use to transform your life. My purpose is to assist you to do things faster. So if you want to transform those blockages quickly, then I work with you on a personal basis. But there's a lot of free stuff out there and many, many healers that are more than willing to assist you. Love melts blockages. Forgiveness is one of the fastest ways to accomplish this. But for example, why might my knowledge and wisdom assist you? Somebody that you have been hurt so much by, how do you forgive them? It requires a higher level of understanding that you might have been initially responsible for creating the karmic set of conditions that has brought that back to you in the form of a reminder. When you can put yourself in that person's seat, if you can envision the possibility of a previous time and you being deceitful towards them, lying to them, breaking their heart, it's not hard to do really. How, how much were you hurt? how much victimization is happening in your heart. Switch roles, imagine that they felt that same level. Then you can move to a place of compassion. Compassion is where you can find forgiveness. When you move your heart to be as compassionate as it needs to be about how they may have experienced that same suffering, then you can forgive in a much easier place. Finances, you have financial blockages. You better go into forgiveness quickly. The only reason you have financial blockages is because you have mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs and karma around money. The mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs are things that you have adopted from all of your peers and their karmic mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. Very potentially ones that you've caused others to believe. You'll never amount to nothing unless you're a college graduate. Maybe that was told you. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But on some level, you've been chose to accept it. That's a financial blockage or a negative mindset, attitude, and belief. What if in a previous time your ancestors were bankers and they didn't give leniency on paying that extraordinary inappropriate tax or inappropriate interest rate? And they purposefully were looking to do that so they could take that family's land and they could sell it at a substantial profit. What if your ancestors made choices like that? That family suffered, went out on the street, starved. What kind of spiritual debt could that bring to you now? What is the power of forgiveness? Those souls suffered. Do you think that that's not going to be addressed? God didn't create the suffering, guys. God gave us free will. He said, you are my children. Go out and explore. Have a good time. I give you free will. Hopefully you'll make good choices. Many of us didn't. We're all on the path to return back home, but that path can be dramatically shortened and the suffering can be dramatically uh, shifted if we move into deep forgiveness. Just stop, write down all the different places you have blockages in your life. Reverse the roles, ask all souls for forgiveness. And this in any time, you or your ancestors have brought harm to them in the same way you're experiencing a blockage. Repeat this process and then chant, sing any, any verse that is higher frequency, divine love. You can just chant in your mind silently, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Please forgive me, I love you. Please forgive me, I love you. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. The key is to stay with that forgiveness long enough and authentically enough where you have significant results. I have done this for many, many years. I can tell you just teaching that to people 
and ensuring that they follow through with that wisdom has transformed their life. Just that. It's very different when we start taking responsibility. The third way is the fast way. It is the divine way. Any people that watch this that have mainstream Western-based religious teachings and beliefs might have difficulty with this part. I encourage you to suspend your understandings long enough to gain a level of wisdom and insight that can assist you with having a, an open mind enough to allow the possibility of what I'm about to say. God did not create one messenger. There are some teachings that state if you do not accept this deity in your heart, you will never make it to heaven. That is a separatist mindset. That is a mindset that is not unconditional. Unconditional love is unconditional love. God does not say, I love my right arm, I don't love my left arm. That's like saying, I love that race, I don't love that race. I love all those that follow this belief system, I don't love all those that follow that belief system. How imbalanced is that kind of thinking? There are more than one holy beings that have come to earth. They continue to come, and they're coming a lot more now on earth. A lot more. And the reason they're coming is because the earth is in trouble. Look around, guys. Wake up. You know that the earth is in trouble. This is our mother. We have been impregnating her with nuclear bombs, chemicals, We've been digging her up. We have been polluting her. We've been cutting down our own breathing mechanism. We have been destroying our life. We have been treating each other with the greatest disrespect possible. And we are one. We are creating a cancer in our own experience. And it has to be eradicated at some point. You've heard of Noah's Ark. That's not the only time that kind of thing has happened. And it came about because humanity and earth developed imbalance and misalignment with love. We're in a similar set of conditions. We hope and pray that things will get better. It takes people to become awake, to take self-responsibility, to move one and many people towards love. It takes people that are dedicated to do live streams like this and say these messages and take a risk of being judged for their perspectives. My teacher, Dr. and Master Shah, is one of those souls. He is one of the, he is the most benevolent being I have ever seen. I know what the ideal of a benevolent being is. I come across Buddha, Jesus, Mother Mary. We have a history of benevolent beings. Very hard to find them in real life today. I have found one. May not be for you, doesn't really matter. What's relevant is the message that this benevolent being brings. He brings the message of oneness. He brings the message that we can make a difference if we all move towards that. And the first recognition of that is that everything has a soul and that every soul is here to serve and that every soul carries both good and unpleasant spiritual debt. And if we collectively work together to clear that, if we collectively forgive each other, if we start taking responsibility for what we've created, we can reverse things. This benevolent being, Master Shah, is one of many who have come to earth at this time. Look at the children today. The children, they come out of the box satellite ready, man. They are, they are on it. They, at two years old, they're on top of that iPad going for it. That is not normal, guys. That is extraordinary. That is heavenly beings coming to earth. They're bringing the highest love. They are questioning everything with exceedingly intelligent questions. They will say, why? Not to, why do you do that? They will say, why, mommy, are these people being mean to each other when all they have to do is apologize and say, I love you? They are saying those kinds of things. That's the deities that are coming to earth at this time. My teacher, Dr. Master Shah, because he has dedicated his life to serve humanity, he, like other holy beings that have come in the past, have been given what's called authorities. Authorities come with what's called soul standing. Every soul has a soul standing. 
all the way up to original creator. Every soul's purpose is to serve. When we serve well, our soul standing increases. When we do not serve well, our soul standing decreases. Very simple wisdom, very simple teachings. When a, be a being comes in, they still have to go through mothers and fathers, churches and teachings, religions, brothers, sisters, all those that teach us, and they have to stay in alignment with what they know is the highest that they can to remember all that they've ever remembered because the highest beings that come in were high before, definitely were high before, but they still have to go through the processes of remembering, realigning to that oneness, and then bringing forth that highest oneness to serve. My teacher, Dr. and Master Shah has written over 20 books, 10 of which are New York Times bestsellers. Guys, that is not accidental. It has to reach into people's hearts to reach bestseller 10 times. He has traveled the world 11 months of the year teaching exactly what I'm teaching and that touches people's hearts. And when they go out and practice what he teaches, it works. Therefore, his service to humanity has expanded. Therefore, the divine has rewarded him by giving him higher abilities to serve. Those higher abilities come in the form of healing. You've heard of uh, Jesus. You've heard of Buddha, Medicine Buddha, Guan Yin behind me. There are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and probably millions of stories about all these uh, deities that have served heaven doing miracle healing. They all have many things in common. One of them is they never, ever take responsibility for the blessings. They bow down and say, I am not doing it. I am a servant. I am a humble servant. God's doing it. But they all have another thing in common. They were all chastised for the service that they provide. They were questioned, challenged again and again. Jesus got thrown up on the cross. What was his final words? Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they do. That's the most heartfelt thing you can imagine. He saved them their karma of many lifetimes because he knows better. That's unconditional love. So has the other deities behind me. Master Shah is one of those higher level beings on the planet today. You don't believe me? doesn't matter. Do your own homework. But have an open mind. Because he is one of those beings, because he has done this kind of thing before, he has come through and he has received high-level healing and teaching authorities, high-level healing transmissions. When I first went to see him, he offered um, what would be termed as miracle healing. I sat in the back and I crossed my arms and I watched. And I saw people's pain go from 10 to 0. Not once, but thousands of times. Every time he gave credit to God, every time he did, took no credit. And he took it one step further. He explained how it worked. He explained the soul. He explained karma. He explained how when these deities, the ones behind me, and Jesus, when they offered a blessing, they would say, you are forgiven. What does that mean? That means your spiritual debt, your ancestor's spiritual debt was forgiven. It's very simple. So did Jesus do it? Jesus was the middleman. Jesus was the source coming through to offer that blessing. He never took credit either. He always gave credit to his Father. The same applies to you. The same applies to everyone and everything. Dr. Master Shah has received those same level of authorities. And each day that he is serving hard like he does, that healing propensity goes up. Eight years ago when I met Dr. Master Shah, he offered the ability to transmit healing power to others. I thought that was an extraordinary possibility. If I could do a fraction of what this master is doing, I am interested. And so I chose to pay $1,000 to receive this healing ability. He said, don't pay me. Go buy the books. Distribute the books freely so that people can learn how to heal themselves, so that people can learn love and forgiveness is a very authentic being. So in learning how this master worked, in learning how the healing worked, and going out and doing over a thousand healings myself, and seeing again and again and again that it worked, I am here today, and I am encouraging you to learn more about soul, to learn more about how this works. So I have been talking for about 30 minutes now. I thank all of you for coming, Monica, Jolly, Yvonne, my wife has joined us, Cat Cat, Donna. Thank you for joining. This I hope will be watched many times and I hope if it resonates with your heart, you'll share it. 
I now want to open the line. I'm going to do a healing at the end of this show to someone that I have not offered healing blessings to yet, someone that's watched me for the first time. I'd like to offer something that is measurable, uh, specifically if it's a headache, a body pain, something of that nature. Hopefully it's not a, a, a 30 year um, <laughs> chronic thing. I could do the blessing for that, but I'm not expecting major results. Um, but if that's all we've got, we'll do it. Um, I also want to do a soul reading in relation to the source of that because there's a reason for everything. It's very important to know that there's a reason for everything. I did a, a class about uh, four weeks ago and it was with Master Patrick Sambueno, a very, uh, very powerful master in his own right. And the, pass, the class was on uh, chronic pain. And uh, we had a, a low turnout because we didn't do our marketing and advertising very well. But we were grateful to serve those that showed up. And one of those souls had um, been experiencing uh, pain in his arm and shoulder. And when we did a soul reading on it, it was curious because Master Patrick has a very wide open third eye. He can see things well. I have a pretty good connection with heaven. I can hear things very well, and my third eye pops open occasionally. Sometimes I get images as well. So we both checked as to the source of this. I heard what I heard, and then Master Patrick started sharing his vision. What I had heard was that it was related to horses in a previous time when either he or his ancestors had harmed others. I, I, I had heard that it was him. And so I kept that to myself. I didn't say anything. Master Patrick started speaking, and he said, I'm seeing that there was a lifetime when you were a horse trader. And during that lifetime, you were very disrespectful to the horses. You were offering unpleasant service to them at this time. And he went on to give a little bit more information. We then did a forgiveness practice around that. We asked the souls of those horses and all those involved to consider receiving this forgiveness. We prepared to offer a divine solution. I mentioned love, I mentioned forgiveness, and I mentioned the divine way to bring about healing. The divine solution is using the divine's authority to offset that spiritual debt, that karmic debt that had been incurred by this individual. This is what Master Shah's received as a reward for his beautiful soul choosing to come in and suffer, humanity is suffering, to go through the processes of suffering, to purify his vehicle so that he could be a conduit for the divine, then to receive these healing transmissions, to go out and serve unconditionally, leaving his wife and three children to only see them a little here and a little there, and then training thousands of people worldwide so that they could be of service to humanity. He has received exceedingly high healing authorities. Those healing authorities are to offer God's forgiveness. So Master Patrick and I have been blessed to receive fractions of that same healing authority. And we did a healing transmission to that student. And instantly, his pain, which was an 8 on a 10 scale, was reduced. It was reduced down to zero in a matter of a few minutes. This is the power of God's forgiveness. This is the power of soul when we recognize what is the source of our blockages. This is the power of understanding soul, that love, forgiveness, and the divine's forgiveness, which is much higher than our individual level forgiveness, much higher than our individual level love, the divine's love and forgiveness can clear things instantly. Ours cannot. So it's important for us to remember that when we make choices that are out of alignment with love, everything is recorded. Our thoughts are recorded, our words and our actions are recorded. Nothing can be hidden from the divine. So I am waiting to see if anybody has a physical blockage a pain or a suffering on the physical level. 
that I could offer a blessing for. So Jolly, Brenda, uh, Donna, you are all new here today. I invite you to put something up on the chat board. Um, and I'd be happy to offer a soul reading and a blessing for that. Uh, while we do that, I am going to go ahead and um, give me a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and offer a blessing for everybody present, everybody that watches us in the future. Um, in a previous video, I explained how I offered a blessing. A month later, when it was seen, it created a healing. That person showed up at our healing center a few months later, saying, I know you. You're the one that offered a healing blessing for my ankle pain that I had for six months. I watched a three-minute blessing. They didn't know it wasn't live. It was a month after I recorded it, and their pain went away. Why? Because God doesn't work in time and space, guys. If the person sincerely asked for forgiveness, if what they had done wasn't so much that that forgiveness could not be offered, then the blessing is offered. I tell you, our beloved Creator is a mysterious being, so we're so blessed. So I will offer a blessing now. Make a request to the Divine for what it is you would like. Also, please make a request for how I can offer healing blessing to you. Blessing for all those requests, for all those on the line now, all those that watch this at a later time, as appropriate. Blessing again. <speaking in Spanish> Crystal, you just joined us. Make your request. Thank you. I can see by watching my computer that the quality is not that good, that it's fading in and out. I apologize. I'm doing this from my home where the, um, they're working off a 4G energy signal and it's not maintaining a strong signal. So I apologize for that. I hope it doesn't make too much of a difference. Do know that the healing blessing does work and that you received it regardless. That, um, Length of time very often is not relevant. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. When I offer a blessing of this nature, it's the divine, obviously, that's doing the healing. And um, pay attention to how things might have shifted or will shift in the next couple of days. I do offer individual healing blessings. I encourage you to go to my page. I've, I, on the start of this, I put my, uh, my uh, page. I can also do individual private uh, soul readings. Some people, um, they're shy about, about what's happening in the world and they don't want the whole world to hear the answer. I completely understand that. Um, I do offer a complimentary 10-minute reading and that might be sufficient for you. You might not need to do additional soul readings. Oftentimes the readings indicate where the blockages are and when we offer uh, the readings, those blockages will be revealed and there's a potential to receive a divine transmission or a crown chakra blessing or a blessing of some type from one of the transmissions I've received that can clear those blockages. Um, again, in the case of pain, it's, it's relatively obvious. You'll notice it right away. It's very validating for those because sometimes people will come to me with relationship blockages and they will want to know, was it real? Did it work? So I'm watching my screen on the telephone and I see that it's pixelated. So I just sent a, um, a blessing to clear the phone 
of the signal blockages. Hopefully that will work. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about these healings. They're not limited to the physical. Right now I'm shaking my hand to clear those blockages of the uh, telephone signal so that it maintains a strong signal. Hopefully it will continue to be strong. Um, so I don't see anyone requesting a healing. Uh, so what I will do now That's good news, by the way. If no one wants to, a healing, then that's good. Um, I'm hearing that one of you has lower back pain, possibly two of you. You're so used to it, you don't even think it'll make a difference. So I will offer that because there will be other people who come on the line that will want that. So I'm going to do what's called a soul operation. A soul operation is one of the healing transmissions I received. It was one of the first ones I received and I got to say it's quite remarkable. Um, it carries an extraordinary level of healing in a relatively short period of time. A soul operation works on the understanding that uh, in the area of the blockage that that area can be cleared. And it's very much like a regular uh, operation, except it's done with a divine light knife, if you will. Um, I cut open the area. I clear the blockages. Okay. I do this with my hands, which helps additional clearing come through. Light comes in. Uh, it's wonderful when we have people with third eye because they'll describe what they see. Um, uh, I can do a soul reading afterwards. but. Um, that's what happens and then at the end just like any operation you have to close the wound and then it's sutured having done this for the past eight years i don't question the effectiveness of it i encourage all those that uh receive this to, to comment on any notices that you have around this and then if you come and watch this at a later date and uh ask at that moment for something for your back could be neck also i'll allow this blessing to occur for the neck as well as the back and ask for a blessing at that time. But when you do, make sure your back is away from the back of the chair. So all those watching, move your back away from the back of the chair or stand up either way and receive fully with uh, love in your heart. While I do the blessing, ask for forgiveness for this or any time you or your ancestors have harmed others, people's backs or necks. Okay? That's the, that's the key that makes for a much higher healing blessing. Okay, so prepare yourself to receive. I will connect and then offer the blessing. Soul operation for all those on the line, all those that will watch this video at a later time, for the condition of lower, middle, upper back pain and or neck pain, specifically. Soul operation begin. <laughs> Opening. Close your eyes. Don't watch me. Just receive. You can always watch this video later. Visualize golden light in your neck and spinal column. Remember to ask for forgiveness for any times that you have harmed others in these areas. Hey la 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 hey ya ya hi yo 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 hey ya hey ya ya hey ya hey ya hi yo hey ya hey ya hi yo yo closing suturing smoothing ha 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you my beloved Creator, thank you, Divine. Thank you, my spiritual teacher, Father, Master Shah. Thank you to the healing transmissions. Thank you to the countless saints, saints, animals, temple souls, treasures, heavens, generals, and soldiers, all those that assisted with the clearing of these blockages for these souls that have come today and those that will watch in the future. 
and deeply honored and grateful. We thanked all the souls that have accepted heaven's virtue to offset the spiritual debt that was showing up in the form of lower back pain, middle or upper back pain or neck pain. If you're feeling better, which get up and walk around first, if you're feeling better, you need to, at your home, bow down to God. Bow down to all those souls that have been harmed, that have accepted this forgiveness and released you of that debt. I didn't do it. Creator did it. Be grateful. If it shows up at a later time, look at your negative mindsets that could have brought it back. Move back into gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So all those that have come, gong song, gong song, gong song, thank you. Um, so that's an example of a soul operation. I'm excited to hear from those in the future. For those here on the line, if you felt anything, warmth, vibration, any other sensations. If you were one of those that had pain but didn't want to mention it in any part of the neck or back, please make a comment now. Um, this is important, not for me, but for all of those in the future that will see this. Because they might watch the video and be 10, 20, 15 minutes into it and say, uh, maybe I'll keep watching, maybe I won't. But if they see your comments about how you received healing for your pain, they might be much more interested in staying and receiving a blessing for themselves. So, thank you for your comments. I look forward to reading those. I will now do a soul reading on this healing for all those that have joined us and all those that will join us so that they know what transpired. <coughs> I am told that there will be 23 people in the future that, who watch this that do have back pain and neck pain. There will be several hundred that see it, but 23 will have these conditions. That 17 of them will have measurable and noticeable shift. That the other five will have about a, a two to three point differential. It'll go down a little bit. How? This is the soul of heaven's team that provided this blessing. All those on the line and all those who watch this healing are very blessed. Little is understood about God's power. Much false teachings give that power to just a few. It is exceedingly important to recognize that every human is capable of this demonstrated healing power. The only thing that separates humanity from being the deliverer of power of this nature is their mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, karmic blockages, and separation from source. Those who receive this blessing here today, who asked with a pure heart and mind, received a 100% benefit. Those who had a 50% doubt, 50% trust, received a 50% benefit. Those who received no benefit were not willing to open their heart or had harmed others too much for the release to occur. Know that the Divine never does not give. That the Divine always gives as appropriate. The blessings here today were appropriate. It is of great value that if you received a blessing that was measurable, tangible, to share. 
your records in heaven have reflected the blessing. Your records in heaven will be updated to any of the sharing. When somebody reads that and their heart is moved, once again, your record in heaven will be opened and additional flowers of virtue will be showered in your record because that person's heart was moved and that opened their soul to greater wisdom and teachings. This is how heaven works. I am honored to offer this wisdom and this insight. How? How? how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so, that is an example of a soul reading. My intention was to do uh, several soul readings today, but one of the things about being in divine flow is you never know where you're going to go with the information that you're sharing. So I wish to thank all of you for coming here today. Please share, if you can, any of your experiences. Please share this video. When I stop it, within a few moments, it will be shareable, potentially right away. And as you share it, make a little note about the value of this for you, so those who tune in can understand how that might serve them. If you have family or friends or loved ones that can use the healing blessings that can transform their life, contact me. I listed my name and a couple different forms of contact on there. If you would like to be on my email list, I'll be doing a once a week video email, then please contact me through my uh, email, text me, Skype me, however you want to do it, and let me know your email that you want to be on that list. And I'll be happy to put you on there and keep you abreast of anything that I'm doing. I also, with my email group, I will be offering group healing, and I will be offering um, special value programs that are designed to, for example, uh, clear you from your financial blockages or clear you from your soulmate relationship blockages. I have programs designed to assist you with those kinds of things, and they're multi-session programs. So if that's of interest to you, please contact me. I am deeply honored. I bow my head to our beloved Creator, to my teacher, Master Shah, to my Heavens team, to all those that have come here today to serve in this capacity, to all of you I bow down, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the sharing that you do of all that I'm offering here today. I am here every day, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Hawaii time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Australian time. I look forward to serving you your family, your loved ones, your friends. Please tell other people about this live stream. You can go to any of my live streams, and if you right-click on it, uh, it'll give you a choice of the URL, the, the, the video link itself. And you can post that video link to anyone that you think might receive value from it. You can either post it on their timeline, or you can send it in a message or an email. This is one way you can share if you felt that this is of value to you and those that you're thinking about. So I am honored for this opportunity to serve you. Until Monday, that's the next time I'll be here. I love you, love you, love you. And aloha. Bye-bye, everyone.